Welcome back to the one and only Ivan. We left off where Ruby was telling elephant jokes. And we'll pick it up with a conversation about children. Once I asked Stella if she'd ever had any babies. She shook her head. I never had the opportunity. You would have made a great mother, I told her. Thank you, Ivan, Stella said, clearly pleased. I like to think so. Having young ones is a big responsibility. You have to teach them how to take mud baths, of course. Even my cat has joined us. And emphasize the importance of fiber in their diet. She looked away contemplating. Elephants are excellent at contemplating. I think the hardest part of being a parent, Stella added after a while, would be keeping your baby safe from harm, protecting them. I think the, um, the way silverbacks do in the jungle, I said. Exactly, Stella nodded. You would have been good at protecting too, I said confidently. I'm not so sure, Stella said, gazing at the iron bars surrounding her. I'm not sure at all. The parking lot. Mac and George are chatting while George cleans one of my windows. Mac, George, Mac, uh, George, Mac says, frowning, there's something wrong with the parking lot. George sighs. I'll take a look as soon as I'm done with this window. What's the problem? There are cars in it. That's what's wrong. Cars, George. Mac breaks into a grin. I think things are actually starting to pick up a bit. It's gotta be the billboard. People see that baby elephant and they just have to stop and spend their hard earned cash. I hope so, George says. We sure could use the business. Mac's right. I have noticed more visitors coming since he and George added the picture of Ruby to the sign. People crowd around Ruby and Stella's domain, ooing and aahing at the sight of such a tiny elephant. I gaze out at the huge sign that makes humans stop and spend their hard earned cash I have to admit that the picture of Ruby is rather cute, even if she doesn't look like a real elephant. I wonder if Mac could add a little red hat and curly tail to the picture of me. Maybe then more visitors would stop by my domain. I could use a few oohs and ahs myself. <laughs> Ruby's story. Ivan, tell me another joke, please, Ruby begs after the two o'clock show. I think I may have run out of jokes, I admit. A story then, Ruby says. Aunt Stella's sleeping and there's nothing to do. I tap my chin. I'm trying hard to think. But when I gaze up at the food court skylight, I'm mesmerized by the elephant-colored clouds galloping past. Ruby taps her foot impatiently. I know, I'll tell you a story, she says. A real live, true one. Good idea, I say. What's it about? It's about me, Ruby lowers her voice. It's about me and how I fell into a hole, a big hole. Humans dug it. Bob pricks his ears and joins me by the window. I always enjoy a good digging story, he says. It was a big hole full of water near my village, Ruby says. I don't know why humans made it. Sometimes you just need to dig for the sake of digging, Bob reflects. We were looking for food, Ruby says, my family and I. But I wandered off and I got lost and went too close to the village. Ruby's eye, uh, Ruby looks at me eyes wide. I was so scared when I fell into that hole. Of course you were, I say. That would have, I would have been scared too. Me too, Bob admits, and I like holes. The hole was huge. Ruby pokes her trunk between the bars and makes a circle in the air. And guess what? She doesn't wait for an answer. The water was all the way up to my neck and I was sure I was going to die. I shudder. What happened then? I asked. I'll tell you what happened, Bob said darkly. They captured her and put her in a box and shipped her off. And here she is. Here she is. Just like they did with Stella. He pauses to scratch an ear. Humans. Rats have bigger hearts. Roaches, roaches have kinder souls. Flies have... No, Bob. Inter Ruby interrupts me. You're wrong. These humans helped me. When they saw I was trapped... They grabbed ropes and made loops around my neck and my tummy. The whole entire village helped. 
even little kids and grandmas and grandpas, and they pulled and pulled, and Ruby stops. Her lashes are wet. I know she must be remembering all the terrible feelings from that day. And they saved me, she finished in a whisper. Bob blinks, they saved you, he repeats. When I was finally out, everyone cheered, Ruby said, and the children fed me fruit. Then all those humans led me back to my family. It took the whole day to find them. No way, Bob says, still doubtful. It's true, Ruby says, every word. Of course it's true, I say. I've heard rescue stories like that before. It's still his voice. She sounds weary. Slowly, she makes her way over to, to Ruby. Humans can surprise you sometimes. An unpredictable species, Homo sapiens. Bob still looks unconvinced. But Ruby's here now, he points out. If humans are so swell, who did that to her? I send Bob a grumpy look. Sometimes he doesn't know when to keep quiet. Ruby swallows, and I'm afraid she's going to cry. But then she speaks. Her voice is strong. Bad humans killed my family, and bad humans sent me here. But that day in the hole, it was humans who saved me. Ruby leans her head on Stella's shoulder. Those humans were good. Doesn't make any sense, Bob says. I just don't understand them. I never will. You're not alone, I say, and I turn my back to the racing gray. Oh, and I turn to gaze at the racing gray clouds. Aw, what a complicated history poor little Ruby has. We'll leave it there until next time with the one and only Ivan.